Hey everybody, Andy Sachs here with Coldwell Banker and the Around Town team again, or most of us. We got Lorna Resto, Jen Kelly, Chris Kling, and Danielle Valenti. And guys, thanks for joining me again. If you guys recall on our last uh, discussion, we talked about selling homes and some of the stuff we're running into and misconceptions and marketing kind of covered the gamut. And today we're gonna to flip to the other side of the real estate transaction and talk about buyers and what they can expect and the troubles that they're running into or the challenges or the successes that we're experiencing. But let's start off with the basics. And Jen, I'll let, I'll let you field this one first, all right? I'm gonna put you on the spot. <laughs> what are the things that every buyer needs to have in place, hopefully, before we start showing homes? I mean, and, and nine times out of 10, I feel like they don't, but I would say you know, pre-approval is the number one thing because you don't want them to go into a house that maybe they can't afford, fall in love, and then realize, oh, they're not, you know, they can't afford to, to buy that house. So pre-approval is the very first thing, and I always, try to talk my buyers into that or I meet with them one time, show them a couple things and then really urge right. them to get it because then when they do fall in love, they're ready to make that offer because you need the pre-approval to make the offer. So to Totally. And, and just a shameless plug here, David Garofalo, Guaranteed Rate Affinity is our co-sponsor of this. So a lot of our buyers have been going through them. They've been pretty happy. Um, now, one step further, do you guys, obviously we, we have them talk to David or another lender that they're comfortable with. Um, and they're talking about what what they can afford, but how are you guys advising them? Like, yes, you're pre-approved for four hundred, but listen, we get it, we get an inkling of how much our clients make, right? And what they do for a yeah. living. Do you, do you guys ever? We're not financial advisors. We can't tell them what to do. We can't give them financial advice. But do you ever guide them a little bit further on what they should be looking at or expect to pay and other expenses that might come about? I think one thing that maybe sometimes buyers don't think about are like the closing mm -hmm. costs mm -hmm. associated with actually buying a house. So besides yeah. coming to the table with a down payment, you're actually going to have to pay some closing costs. And so going along with the um, pre-approval, I think it's also important to note, do you need help with sell like the seller to help you pay for or roll the closing costs into your mortgage? Um, because then that's less money out of pocket. Right coming to the closing table. So I think it's just something that maybe people don't necessarily think about. Do you, do you guys realize that like your clients sometimes have trouble understanding what that means though? Yeah. Yes. Right, so yes. we're making an offer for 400, but you want 10,000 in closing costs. So Mr. Buyer, you're really making an offer of 390. Right. Yep. But they don't get, no, I'm making an offer of 400. Yeah, exactly. Right. No, but the seller is netting <laughs> 390. Exactly. Because you call it a seller closing credit, which makes it sound like the seller is paying for your closing costs right. when in fact, you're just rolling them into your mortgage. Right, and your mortgage yeah. is increasing by 40 bucks a month or whatever it might be. It's a great tool, but I feel like I battle that every... The every sellers time. don't get it sometimes too. Why am I, no. give, why am I running a check for 10,000? Well, right. you're, you're not. <laughs> you just... Yeah. 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 It is. It's, it's tricky. It's, we are all like so... We see it. We know it. Yeah. Exactly. And, but like yeah. for a, especially a first-time home yeah. buyer or first-time home seller, I feel like it's a very foreign... Like, I don't want to pay their closing costs. Like, right. why am I why, paying? They, they can't afford to buy this house. Yeah. Why do they? No, they can, but they're young but family. But it's so and common. Yeah. Yeah. It's so yeah. common. Yeah. Like, I feel like so many of my buyers need I, assistance I, with I their think, closing costs. I think even up to like the five hundred thousand dollars price point and below, I think we're seeing it across the board. Very mm -hmm. common, yeah. You know, because people, I think, I don't know, it's through the recession. Like before the recession, people were getting promotions and had more money and this and that. But I think people are like their careers might be more stagnant. Or not, I mean, if you look at the employment numbers or the wage numbers, at least in Connecticut, they're not up a lot. So people don't have a ton of expendable cash, right? Right. I mean, so they need this help, but mm -hmm. getting over and explaining it's kind of kind of tough. Yeah. <sighs> uh, I also think that. Um, I often have the conversation with my buyers about their monthly payment because usually yeah. that's where people are most comfortable, right? They look at their expenses on a, instead of big picture over time, what they're, it's going to cost them, what they're comfortable with um, monthly. And I think even when people have that extra cash flow that they really could pay for their closing costs, I think that's a nice option when they know that there's the ability to roll it in. Um, because then they can keep the cash in their pocket and just roll their closing costs into their monthly payment. Yeah. And um, they feel more comfortable. I mean, for a lot of our clients, that, that $8,000, $10,000 is a lot of money yeah. that they sleep a little bit better at night knowing it's in the bank account. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you don't want them to deplete their savings yeah. buying the house because who knows what's going to, I mean, now you're a homeowner, right? So let's be real. Something may come up that they're going to need to fund. Something will come up. Yeah, something, something will. will. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I don't care what the I want to say it cautiously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in that first year, there's going to be a major expense. And every right. day yeah. you're out there, something breaks. Mm -hmm. I don't care how great the inspection was or not. Right. Something's going to happen. 
So you want them to be cautious to not spend all of their savings on closing costs and down payment because then what do you do when you... Yeah, you don't want to zero on your bank account when you're going into your home. Right. Yeah. The conversation I also like to have with buyers at the same time about rolling your closing costs into your um, mortgage is also the fact that you're going to be doing an inspection and it's always important to think about if I max out how much I can get back at closing from the seller, how am I going to negotiate credits back at closing if something were to come up on the inspection? So it's just kind of like a fine line between you hope nothing comes up on the inspection. Inevitably, it always does. does. So, So to clarify what Lauren's saying for whomever might be watching this is that you can only take closing cost credits pretty much up to what your closing costs will be. So if that's your tax escrows, your insurance escrows, your mortgage fees, et cetera, total $10,317, you can not take a penny more. Yep. And if something comes up in inspection and the seller's not willing to fix it, replace it, and then they will well, give you a credit because I, I live in Oklahoma and I can't do that because uh, I don't live here, you can't take any more credit. Now you're chipping away at what yep. you thought was going to be your closing costs right. being covered, but exactly. now you're chipping away at that. That's a great mm-hmm. point. That's a great point. And I think both of you kind of touched on it. Talking to them about what their monthly payment is, I think is really important because we all budget, I feel like, mostly on a monthly basis. We have yearly maybe savings goals and other financial goals, but we kind of worry about like what's going out each month, each week. And we don't. I think we all sleep really well at night because we don't want to advise our clients to buy as much as they can. I think there was a time where realtors did that and mortgage brokers, well, you can, af- mm-hmm. you can afford more, we'll lend you more. We'll lend you, you can take mm-hmm. more, don't yeah. worry, the market will be fine, you're not moving for 20 years, it'll definitely be, well, my God, like, sleep well at night, right? Yeah. Don't, don't stress about paying your mortgage every month. Like, if, if you're married and you're, and you're, you're, you're together buying a house, if one of you loses a job, you still wanna be able to pay your mortgage, mm-hmm. right? Like, stressful enough. So a I lot think. of times I tell first time home buyers, like try to only base it, if you can, on just one salary, because then if something happens or you're in between yeah. jobs or you have a kid and you want to stay at one of you wants to stay at home, then you have that option and you're not strapped to yeah. your mortgage payment. I mean, I think we owe it to our clients to have that conversation. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, of course. We're not financial advisors, but at the end of the day, like we're, we're looking to build relationships for a lifetime. Yeah, and, right. That's the thing. We care about our clients. So we're not just trying to sell exactly you whatever right. house that you can afford right. at the max. We want you to always remember that we looked out for you and we want you to love your home and feel comfortable where you are. Right. We take away that like shock and awe effect too, breaking it down into the monthly payments and working with Dave and his team. They help break it down not only to, you know, your pre proof of $400,000. They say, Listen, you're pre approved for $400,000 to a house that has up to $8,000 in taxes a year, and that puts you at this amount for a monthly payment. Mm -hmm. And then as we go through houses, we kind of let them know, you know, average utilities is this. So we're looking at X amount per month, and then we have to break it down from there. Okay, maybe we don't go 400,000, maybe 375 with 6,000 in taxes is more reasonable for you, because that brings your payment down to this per month. Right. Especially for like first time home buyers, I think what you're saying, like c- breaking it down by month, probably they're renting somewhere and they can feel what $1,800 a month feels like. Okay, I feel comfortable at $1,800 a month. What kind of a house can I buy with this yeah. down payment and still keep my payments between 18 and 1850 or something like that? So they can, yeah. Yeah. they're already kind of living what it would be like to have a mortgage and, you know, they could still. Go out to dinner. They could still right. afford live, to live do, their life, live their and, life, but still own, you know, property, yeah. which I think is an interesting way to look at it when you're a first-time homebuyer. Because sometimes you think, oh, a mortgage, like thirty years, oh, this feels so like too much. And right. but, but like you were saying, if you break it down by month, I think it makes a lot more mm-hmm. sense. Right, and that's a great point because it's like we always see and say, you're renting somewhere, you're paying somebody's mortgage, mm-hmm. so it might as well be your own. Your own. Right? Exactly. exactly. Yeah, we all have clients. I think all of us have some right now, actually. That are looking at so many homes, they're either getting outbid, we can't find the right home, and the clients actually start feeling bad for us. <laughs> yes. 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 They're like, I'm sorry, I know this is the 20th home, the 25th home, and I know we're- We're, we're, we're writing we're, offers at 9.30 at night. Yeah, <laughs> and they're not doing it, or whatever, I feel so bad, are you mad at us? I'm like, the answer is no, we're not this mad at you. No, this is our job. It's our, it's our job. mission to yeah. find you a we're, house. We're, we're, <laughs> none, none of us, I think, think we're getting rich overnight in this business, right? Like, no. it is a relationship business, we're gonna be doing it for 20, 30 years, and believe it or not, we actually enjoy doing it. Does it get frustrating sometimes? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. But for the, for the most part, like, you know, as a, from a buyer's perspective, don't, don't worry about us. Like. 
we would appreciate you take our advice once in a while. Like, this is not the house for you. You shouldn't go look at it. And it's on the side of a cliff, and you just had to have a colonial. This is a ranch. And you yeah. said you want flat property, and it's not – just listen to us sometimes. Yeah, exactly. We're guiding you in the right way. But I think it's – we all come at it from a really altruistic approach. Like we want to get deals done. We want to sell houses. But we also realize that, like, this is a huge investment. Mm-hmm. And it all kind of goes full circle to what you guys are saying. Like, what's, what's your monthly? Break it down. Are you comfortable in this payment? In this structure, so I think you guys all do just a tremendous job, just really guiding our clients. It's not, it's not about the we transaction. We want them to be happy. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, we want happy buyers. The transaction is a byproduct. I think giving yeah. the service that you guys give and the guidance that you guys give. Mm-hmm. So it's just, it's a testament to what we're we're doing as a team and 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 how we're growing. And there's there's no there's no I don't think there's a better way to do it. So. And something great about guaranteed rate affinity. Like if you see a house and your client falls in love with it and they're they're already working with guaranteed rate, you. They could text um, like their lender right then and get a pre-approval like within minutes. Like, oh, I saw this house. So this is the address. Can you write me a pre-approval? And it's like immediate. Like it's, it's yeah. that's a really good point because I, I find that um, especially when it's new buyers, weekends. right? So people weekends, that we haven't yeah. been working with a long time, maybe, and they think, oh, I, I have to wait until Monday because this mm-hmm. lender that I was first wor- working with isn't going to be able to get me a letter. I mean, we can get a letter in five minutes mm-hmm. from yeah. Dave and his team. So. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah, very true. <laughs> and you need that letter to make the offer. So. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Call, can, we'll get the, it to you another buy, day. Don't buy it. Like, well, just call and put it in verbally. I'm like, you don't know you exist. <laughs> yes. It needs yes. to be on paper, people. Yeah. 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 Oh. Admit it without it. I'll get it to Trust you Trust me, I'm good. I'm yeah. good. <laughs> what are some of the craziest requests you've received from buyers, if you can think of any? Like inspection wise or <laughs> search? <laughs> let's, let's, okay. That we'll opens up a whole Sur- Search wise. Okay. Is there anything out there that's like, we can't fulfill that request? Is there anything you've seen or heard? Or just things that maybe that are just common, but like don't exist in price points? I just feel like first time home buyers in general just want it all. You know, they want a house that's updated. They want to move in, don't have to do anything. Um, first time home buyers in a, in a more modest price range. Right, yes. right. Yeah, exactly. Because I feel like, you know, it's hard, you know, as, as agents, it's hard for us to find, you know, the perfect home for yeah. them, you know? Totally. Or everybody thinks like it's going to be like on TV where right. you go to show three me three homes. houses, yeah. I'll yeah. love one. It's like put in an They'll offer choose one at a coffee good. shop the next day <laughs> and they'll call you in. HGTV makes me drink. Yeah. <laughs> it's just what it comes down to. You know what though, yes. on, the, on the flip side of that, I will say too though, I think a lot of times I meet people either they're at open houses or they'll come through on Zillow and they have this. Um, mindset that like buying a house is going to be the most stressful, most awful thing that they're going right. to do. And I always try to reel it back in, like, this is why are you buying a house, right? What what's the goal here? And we try to make the process as smooth as possible. Mm-hmm. We put out the fires behind their back if we can um, to try to make them have a great experience. And I think that for me, it's very rewarding when I get a text or a phone call from a buyer afterwards once they're clear to close or at the closing table and they're like by the way thanks so much everybody made this seem like it was going to be terrible and it wasn't that bad and a lot of that is the team that we put together for them with the lenders the attorneys uh we're all working together yeah to to make sure that they have a a smooth experience and that they don't feel like it was the worst thing that they ever did sometimes you can't control things (laughs) sometimes you cannot control things exactly but the feeling of being taken care of throughout the whole process like you said with the team it's like Oh, well, you know, Danielle hooked me up with the mortgage person. She even took care of hooking me up with an attorney. Right. She had the best inspection crew I've seen. They answered all my questions, and I felt just comfortable throughout the whole transaction. It helped That's a lot. Just, I was just yeah. going to say, I feel like people always assume, like, oh, you're, you're – you know, recommending these people and you must get something from them. And that's not the case. We just get good service from the people that we recommend. And that's why we do it because we know the process will be smooth. Right. Um, And so that's why we recommend people. It's not because we get anything, you know, out of it. It's just, you know, a rewarding, smooth process. Right. I think also you mentioned it. We're putting out fires behind the scenes. Yes. There's so much from on the buy side and sell side that clients never see, never experience. And if they did, they probably wouldn't buy homes. But there's stuff going on that I mean, whether it's whether it's something with attorneys or something with inspections or what have you, that we filter it all down before it even reaches the client, so they can then absorb it and, and talk about it. And I think that, that and we can't. It's tough because we can't show that, right? It's just like, and I think sometimes the client realizes, like, I know there was a lot of stuff going on. You took care of, thank you. 
but we can't be like, hey, by the way, today I did this for you. Yeah. Right. Here's you can't my call- bar bill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, 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 we don't bill like a lot of attorneys exactly. like by the hourly rates. Yeah. By the, 12 more hours. We wouldn't make any money if we did that. No. <laughs> I made another phone call for you today. So there's just so much that goes on that people don't see. And we'll, we'll never be able to put it out there what we do do. And that's okay. Yeah, no should I think, we. You know, yeah. We're mm-hmm. kind of silent soldiers sometimes, but it, so much happens. It's a stressful process for buyers, stressful process for sellers. Sometimes it's very emotional. emotional. You get a lot of people involved and it's a lot start, of personalities. Start getting a lot of family members involved. I know we're yeah. working on a case right now with that. And it's just everyone has an opinion. And a lot of times those opinions are driven by, by emotion. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not even what right. makes sense for a sale. We're always talking about here are the numbers, here's why this makes sense. You know, here's where the market's going. So, you know, this is something you should consider taking now. But then you have a daughter or a husband or a son or somebody talking, but the market's great. Well, okay, you live in Manhattan. It's a little bit different yeah. than what it is here. You know, don't, don't, don't you dare sell it for this or you're paying too much for that. And ask them to ask the seller from an inspection to, to put a new furnace in. Even though the furnace is new, get a new one. They'll do it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if they want to really sell this thing, let's see. You no, know? they won't. So, yeah, it's like there's so much that goes on. So much that goes on. Um, so one final question on the buy side. What can buyers expect as this market continues? Are there any changes? And, and I'll caveat that by saying, so like 10 years ago or 12 years ago, before like Zillow and Truly, it was everything, right? Mm-hmm. Buyers didn't know what they didn't know. They had no information. If they didn't see a home in the, in the local paper or the real estate book or driving around an open house, they would not know that home existed on the market. The realtor had to know only that town. They had to go to every broker tour and they had to come to us and say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Realtor, I need a four bedroom home, here's my prices, show me everything that I can buy. And you have to trust that realtor showing you everything that fit their needs. But now, like if they wake up in the morning for us and they pull up Zillow and they get an alert, say ding, hey Andy, can you, can you show us 123 Happy Street? I'm like, didn't know that was on. I mean, yeah. yeah, that looks like a great home. We should see that. Mm-hmm. Calling the agent, what's going on with this one, trying to yeah. get the information. What's next? Like what? What's ha- what's going to happen with the buying process later? Right? You know, the next ten years. What can we look forward to? Is it is technology a disruptor, or is the way we do business going to change? Like, is there anything you guys are experienced or saw or read or that could be kind of a game changer? I think it's just going to be kind of what you're saying. Just the the person who communicates the best is the first one to respond. Is like better servicing their clients than mm-hmm. somebody else. You know, yeah. you, you pick up the phone at. 7 a.m. and answer that buyer right away. Whereas to my family's chagrin, yes. my, mine too. Yours too, but, absolutely. <laughs> but I mean, it's just what we do, and yeah. um, you know, because we don't want them to miss that house, or we don't want a, a missed opportunity for our yeah. clients. So I think that's a big change from our perspective. Like we have to be ready to respond. On call. We talked about this. Yeah. yeah, on the way up, we were just saying, we feel like as realtors, we're always on call. Like yeah. you're never off. So when that phone rings at 10 o'clock at night. You're not, oh, I'm going to talk to them tomorrow. Nope, you're going to talk to yeah. them tonight because they want to know now. Because they do have all that information at they their fingertips. So much information. Right. Yeah. We can't, so we can't control that information flow like we used to. I mean, none of us could. We, none of us were in the business when that happened. Right. So we're just, you know, we have to be super responsive and super service oriented. But isn't that interesting that, like, that's what our business is at the core. Like, service is what we do. Like, mm-hmm. that's never changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Like, I don't care what technology does. A robot is not going to be able to show right. you a house. A robot's not going to be able to have an, an emotional conversation mm-hmm. with another agent or the seller or the buyer to really get down and dirty on, on, on why they're selling, how much, and all those other mm-hmm. things. Like, I don't care what technology does. Right. Like, or having just the experience in our marketplace. I mean, I think the buyers now, they have to be prepared. You really have to be ready because, like, we talk about inventory is low buyer pool there's so many people out there there's so much competition if you go into a house and you see it you might have to make a decision today today you have to have your pre-approval you have to know that your what your monthly payment's going to be you have to see that there's going to be things you're going to have to fix up in the house you have to know that you know you're when you do the inspection your house is not going to be perfect you're not buying a brand new home even we know even when you buy a brand new home there's (laughs) things that you're going to have to do or fix um and i think that us being in the market, knowing what's going on, being able to walk into a house and saying, you know what, there was a showing before us, there's a showing after us, and I know that agent, and they've got a revolving door here, you need to make a good offer right now. Uh, You know, a robot's never gonna be able to do that. We think about market disruptors, right? Like, so Uber came in, and people are like, well, I'll never get in a car with a stranger, I don't know, I'm only gonna use a taxi, right? But they do, and and there's multiple companies that do that now. But think about it, 
who's still providing the service, right? It's a human. It's, a human. it's still a human interaction. And that's why I still, I think there'll be market, there'll be um, disruptors throughout our industry. There'll be new technology, this stuff we haven't thought about that's coming out, but they're still gonna need us to open the door and guide them through that. And I think that the old school service that, that we give, that you said, it's not going anywhere. And, and I think we use technology to our advantage yeah. a lot too, because our, our buyers are in some ways more educated, but also we can say, you know what, that estimate that you might be getting as the price of your house isn't accurate and here's why, and show them you know, a history of what that estimate would, would have been for other houses. And you know, so while they think they're more educated because of all this yeah. technology, sometimes it's a, a false education or not exactly true to the market. So I think we can use technology in a, in a way to help our clients too. Absolutely. Oh, exactly. we, have, we have to embrace it. Right. It's not going on anywhere. We have to use it. But okay, one more topic. Yeah, go ahead. Misinformation. <laughs> <laughs> right? So so what's everybody, what, what's the, com someone's going to jump in. Someone's going to know this. I'm going to put it out there. What's the most common thing you hear? The well, best of it. Zillow best. says my Zillow. house is worth. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And what, what, what's, what kind of answer do you guys give? What do you give, Laura? I mean, I think it's become a little more accurate over the last year or so, but I mean, I, I don't know what exactly, how they pull their data or where they're getting it from. So I don't put a lot of weight on it because I'm not the one pulling that information. You know, right. so who have, you know, they're getting it from some algorithm, which I think has gotten better, like I said, but I mean, it's really going to come down to the local market, what, what comps I see. And I, I mean, I, honestly, I don't think they're that They're accurate. not going into those houses yeah, either. Right. And right. that's the biggest thing, right? They don't know exactly what updates were made, exactly, you know. What does the land location, look like? What does look Right. They, yeah. don't, they don't realize the highway's right behind the house, and therefore there's no way it's going to yeah. sell for whatever. Right. Or the smell of cat. In yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> or, a cat, or a house full of rabbits. Yeah, yeah. A house that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've seen that one recently. Um, no, <laughs> I, absolutely. So it's. I always tell myself, use it as a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. It's a great yep. first step, but by no means is the, the gospel of pricing. Right. No. Guys, awesome conversation. Thank you so much for taking the drive up here today. I appreciate it. I'm Andy Sachs. This is the Around Town team. You'll be seeing more of them. They're, they're everywhere. They're <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us.